Hi everyone, welcome to the Art Workshop. My name is Christopher Appling. Glad to have you here on Pike TV as we start a new episode looking into the different types of mediums, techniques, and different types of things that we may come up with just using simple supplies you might find at any given art store, hobby store, or craft store. I'm so glad you're with us today. Uh, before we start, I'd like to encourage everyone to go onto our YouTube page at Pike TV 99. Just search for that on YouTube. Under playlist, you'll find all sorts of different types of great selections of videos that highlight local events, uh, local government, and even the art workshop. We're closing in on almost 100 episodes. So be sure and go and check out all those different cool playlists there on YouTube. So in today's episode, we're going to do something pretty cool. So what I'm thinking of is we'd like to maybe look at a thing called perspective again. Uh, sometimes we touch on it, touch on it quite a bit though, because it's such a huge theme in art. When you talk about perspective, you have to think about how your eye sees angles from a distance, things close up to you, things far off. There's all sorts of different ways to approach perspective, uh, especially if you're a new beginner in art and trying to learn about it. Another thing we're going to be talking about today is sepia, I think is the right way to say it. It's a color theme of one certain brown to light, and it's a hue of those colors and shades of brown that sort of create a look of almost like vintage old, um, usually associated when you think a lot about with antiques or old photographs from the early 20s and 30s. Uh, you'll see those types of color themes a lot there. I'm going to be using those using alcohol-based markers. So those markers are different types of markers that are not oil-based, they're alcohol-based, so they can be blended together fairly easy, and that's what we want today, because we're also going to be showing shading. So when you combine perspective with shading using a sepia background, you can come up with some really cool different effects. So let's go ahead and get started. Now I like to talk about tools, of course. In today's episode, real simple, you need a pencil. You're also going to need a sturdy eraser. If you have one on the tip of your pencil, that'll work great. I like to use a pen, just a uh, you know, variation, felt tip pens. One's a brush pen, one's a thicker nub type pen. And then here's what might not be readily on hand so much, it's the markers. Now these here are Copic markers. Those can be relatively expensive. I found a bunch on sale. <laughs> Uh, we don't endorse any brand, of course, but with these being on sale, I thought, why not? It would be a good option for us to come in and play around with. Now, I may or may not use, I'm still kind of debating on it, even this early on, and even, I mean, it's close on in recording, as we record, I'm still thinking about it. But this is an acrylic ink, and the color on this is a very light uh, Naples yellow, uh, which is like a combination of cream and yellow. So I may or may not use that. I've been thinking about it. We'll see how it goes, okay? So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to draw, and as I draw, you draw at home. That's the whole idea. Now, the basis of the show is I have a very large canvas here I'm working on. Now, you, of course, uh, if you only have a certain smaller piece of paper at home, that's fine, okay? Also, uh, this is just coming off uh, Valentine's Day. If you notice, my fingers might look a little bit pinkish. My daughter uh, painted my nails for, ha for Valentine's Day. Uh, didn't really decide to keep it on the show since it's over with, but I still have a little bit of residue on there. Because you know what? I'm not really sure uh, how, to, how to use nail polish that well. But anyway, let's jump into today's episode. Now, with perspective, where you always start out with, this is very super important, you need to have what's called a horizon line. The horizon line, think of it like this. Think of it as you're standing on the shoreline, looking out into the ocean. This is as far as your eye can see. So if the sun was setting right here, it's just past the horizon. This is your horizon line. Now, there's different things that happen with the horizon line because you have different angles going off into the distance. So think about if a building stood right here and it would go slanted down into the horizon line to the middle like this if the street went up this way. Can you see what I mean by that? I hope you can because that's exactly what we're going to be doing. Now, with the horizon line, you also need a vanishing point. Our vanishing point is going to be set off to the side right about here. Okay? I'll explain more about how that works in a minute. Now, with our, our vanishing point being here, here's the first step in this. You're going to create a line coming from this point straight towards the right-hand corner of the page, like this. Okay? Now, imagine if this is a road going off into the distance. Maybe you're out somewhere in the Midwest, real flat lands. So you might would see another line going down like this, maybe about like that, forming a road. Okay, but we're not going to, we're not going to do that necessarily. We, we will have something else happening here, but it's going to occur more in a minute. Uh, we'll have a little line coming back this way just to kind of help identify where, where the elements will be. Now, we need to kind of know where the top of our vanishing point is going to happen. So I'm going to come about right here, and I'm going to come up 
this way, sort of like this, coming down towards that vanishing point. So now we have everything we need to start building a little city, kind of like a little street, okay? I'm going to go ahead, though, now that I don't need it so much anymore, if I can erase with this eraser, I may have to use one of my pencil here. I'm going to get rid of this darker line as much as I can. I have to press down kind of hard sometimes, depending on the type of pencil I'm using. Sometimes it's hard to get that off, though. I'm going to get rid of that portion. You can still see it, but it's okay. Now I'm going to pop back up in here towards the front of the, of the canvas. I'm going to bring a line coming up about right here. What we're going to do is we're going to draw a little gate here. So let's pretend that um, this is a little community, and we're going to see all sorts of little things happening on this street, okay? There's a little gate there. It's a little crooked. Let me try to straighten that up a little bit more. I always try to remember to try to draw a little bit more of an angle sometimes with this, but here we go. Here we go. Okay, that's a little bit better. That. It's a little bit better now. Okay. Now the gate is going to have in front of it some bars here. So you could think of maybe like this is a little top of a alleyway. Just a few of those things like that happening. I'm going to put a bicycle down here. So I'm going to draw a wheel. So draw a circle. Then I'm going to have a line coming up from that circle. And then this connects, of course, to the handlebars here. OK. And then, of course, the seat. I have to have a rail going back to the seat back here. There we go. And then we have another line coming down this way to the spokes, pedals. down this way, and then the back wheel, okay? That's about all we need to form a bicycle here. Someone's just parked it on the street. Now up here, the idea is there's a window. So this is leading up into someone's apartment. Now all of these lines that we start to create now that are coming down towards this direction have to follow where the vanishing point is, okay? So, so this line at the top has to angle down. If it kept on going, it would somehow once eventually lead down into this area here where this vanishing point exists, okay? I'm going to draw another line coming down here to form a box in that window, more to make it more 3D, okay? And then we're going to separate the buildings. So we need a line coming down. So there's one building, and we're going to have the next building appear right beside of it, okay? So, so far, all we've done is played with this area, right? We're going to be moving on, though, deeper into the drawing now. I'm going to draw a vine kind of coming up the wall here. Maybe some leaves on the vine. Like that, okay? Now we're going to draw a second window just above an entranceway. This entranceway is going to be a little funky, so watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring a line up here, about like that. Draw another line coming up here, beside of it, parallel. Now watch what we're going to do. We're going to connect those two lines with an arc. It's an archway here, okay? So the door is not square, right? Once we do that, we have to draw inside of that just a little bit to make it more 3D. See that? Then, of course, you have a step up here. So let's draw a line here, leading up to another step here, and then a door just inside, like that. Okay? You may draw some grains coming down, looks like wood, something like that. Okay? Now, just above it, we do our window. The reason I drew the door first is I kind of want to know where the window is going to set. The window should be just above the door, right in the middle. Here we go again, playing with more of these 
lines. Now, if you had a ruler, you'd want to bring every single one of these um, lines that go in towards the middle of that drawing fall in the same direction. But we're eyeballing this, and with perspective, it's kind of hard to eyeball. You can do it if you've done it quite a bit, though. But again, this isn't going to be perfect by any means. But we're going to get pretty close as we can, at least, to showing perspective here, okay? Here we go. Now, once again, inside the window, here we may have a flower pot. Someone has placed on the windowsill. And again, to make it 3D. Now, the top of this building here, my idea of this is it goes on further, but I'm going to stop for now. Let me put another window right here. Now remember, you start out with these two parallel lines like that. And then once you have those two, you can really go back in and add the rest. See? Down, up. There we go. Now let's make another building. So just a straight line coming up. There we go. And down. Now, see how we've done here? We've separated these into segments, okay? I'm going to sharpen my pencil a little bit here. Now we're going to continue on down the street. Now this is going to be something a little different here. This building is going to be a little bit smaller because again, as we're getting closer to that vanishing point, everything is shrinking. It's going to appear to be smaller anyway, right? This is going to be a little bit larger of an entrance here. Two parallel lines forming a door. Okay. Let me draw some lines like this. There we go. I draw some steps coming up to that now. So now this, this entranceway has steps leading up to it. So you may draw a few angles here like that, leading up into the entranceway, okay? Draw like a little tiny, sort of a wicker style awning here. There we go. That comes down, giving shade. Now we have two windows here, one, two, now, the next thing we want to do is add a little bit of a window pane inside that. Like that. Okay, good. Now, so far we have straight buildings going up. What we want to do from here is come back up to the front again. And we're going to add here where we have this sort of a little entrance that's sort of barred off. Put a little more detail in this by adding some lines going in towards this area and it's going to look like block now like this little section of wall is blocked okay above that just above that I'm going to make some sort of this is a little bit more of like of a design thing but bring some lines looking like the stucco is worn off the building a little bit see and you can see inside of there maybe the brick Okay. It's always good to add little features like that when you're doing a landscape, even if they don't exist in the drawing that you're looking at or the referencing, because these little things just help to enhance the drawing, especially when you're starting to put color or any type of, uh, um, later on, any type of wash or shadow or anything like that in there. Okay, there we go. Okay, now back towards the vanishing point. Now this is where things get really, really tight here because we're going to start seeing now the uh, tops of the buildings are going to start differentiating quite rapidly okay and that happens with any time you see um, structures with your own eye if you're, sta if you're standing on the street corner looking down into this you're going to, you would see this you would see something along the lines of this what if this building was just in sort of set back a little bit into this alleyway here okay so you couldn't really see a whole lot of it it's pushed back a little bit. Now, this isn't typical of probably any street corner you'd probably find in eastern Kentucky. What we're doing here is more of something probably found maybe in, uh, in probably Europe or France or someplace like that. But still, that, that area gives great context for uh, doing uh, drawings such as this. Now, we're going to bring the top of this building out 
further now. See? This one down. It's going to be a little bit sharper decline here. See what works out? We just had the top of the building, just a few lines. These two come down and these go in. And once you have those, you can form the side of the building now. This comes down and you can see this one actually dipping back into that street there. This one coming down here. Now we're getting really, really, really tight here. Notice how close together everything's starting to become, right? You're going to see less detail now. You're going to start seeing more of uh, just shadow, uh, just small, small glimpses of what might be there because your eye can't pick all this up. Your eye can only see so far because of distance and, and of course, perspective. So if one building's obscuring another building, you're not going to see much of it, right? Okay, now these buildings here are going to collapse in on themselves pretty much. You're just going to have a few sort of just randomly stuck through here. One here, bring this one out a bit if you want. Bring the top down. Down here. It's a little bit wider building, but not so far. Now see what's starting to happen? The detail is just getting completely absorbed by this black hole, if you will, this vanishing point. It obscures things, it makes things become less visible, the detail just evade, uh, evaporates. Now, we're starting to round this curve, and we're not going to put much on this side. Most of our detail is honestly going to be on this right-hand side, but we need to frame this drawing up. And when we talk about this in art, this is when we talk about when your object becomes a form. What, what that's meant by is that, you know, you have to frame your, your drawing or whatever it is you're creating with your subject matter, okay? So what is the subject matter here? What is the, um, what is the context of this drawing? What's well, a city? It's a, it's a small street, okay? So if I'm looking at this, so far at this point, it's half a street. If we want to make this a full street, all we need to do is one thing, okay? Jump over here. I'm going to get rid of this vanishing point. Get rid of this line and that part of the horizon line. It's the last step we need to do before we start adding color. So right about here, as we round this curve, we're going to have a building pop up just out of the blue here. Right here. Okay? And then we're going to bring this in like that. And this one at the top, of course, it has to have a top to it. So this top's going to come up dramatically, something like this. Okay? See, now you can start to see how the buildings themselves frame each other. So it's like framing um, bookends or something to, to, to a bookshelf. Okay? So bring this building, edge this building down. We're only seeing a small portion of what's happening over here because really our drawing is from here to here. Okay? That's pretty much it. Okay? But we're still going to see a little bit here. We may even add just a little bit of detail here with maybe banisters, like a balcony on the side of a building. Draw lines coming down like this. And then of course, this one here, we need to have a door, throw a little bit of a step up here. I know I'm moving really fast. The idea though, once you've actually followed along pretty close with the right hand side, you should be comfortable enough to throw detail in as I am on the left. But this is something that takes a lot of practice. Perspective is not easy. I'm not really good at it. I'm, I'm learning and I learn every time I draw something that uses perspective, perspective, I learn more. One small thing I want to add to this drawing before we actually put a little bit of this color down is I want to put a few of these little tiny marks in the street. It looks sort of like cobblestone, maybe even block or something, okay? And what that does, it just helps again to add context to the drawing. It gives an idea of where this might be taking place, where this drawing is happening, that sort of thing. And over here on this section of this gate, okay? The reason I didn't draw this in all the way when we first started is I had to draw the bicycle. I knew that. Then also I knew that if I added a ton of lines just right out of the gate without really framing this up as I have here, it'd be hard to understand what it was I'm doing, okay? But now what I can do is go back and add more bars kind of coming down. So the idea is this is a gate here that someone might open 
and they may park their car inside of it or maybe it's just an access to their to their home. This is a lot of bars coming up and down here. Something like this. Okay. There we go. Now, now we're at the point where we actually can add a little bit of uh, color or wash. Okay. And for that, just remember, if you're using um, something like these markers, they're alcohol-based markers, so they absorb um, blend. And they're also going to pick up the pigment of your, um, your pencil. Okay? You can't avoid it. What a lot of artists will do at this point, actually go in with a kneaded eraser and rub over top of their entire drawing, picking up all the loose pigment, because I mean uh, graphite. Because there is, gr if I were to rub this really hard, which I'm doing a little bit now, you'd be able to see the smudges. Okay? Because number one, I'm having to press down a little bit harder for you to be able to see it really well at home. And then number two, I'm using a very dark pencil for this to begin with. So not only am I pressing down hard, the pencil graphite itself is like a B, which means it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty dark. But we're going to try to do this. So we're going to start out with the very lightest alcohol-based color we have, okay? Now the goal here is not to paint this. We're not painting this entire piece. Hopefully that'll show up some. It does. Okay? What we're doing is we're going in here and we're going to... Uh, highlight certain areas, okay? And you see how that picked up right there with the with the graphite? So we're highlighting certain areas. So you may hear a lot of marker movement right now with the with the microphone, but just certain areas, okay? Now this goes into a little bit of a theory, a color theory. And with color theory, what we're talking about there is where is shadows hitting and where's where I mean where the shadow yeah, where the shadows are forming and where the light is hitting. So we need to know kind of where the light source is. Look, like where's the main light source? So for us in this drawing, let's pretend that our light source is, let's say, out this way somewhere. Okay? The sun is up here. So as the sun is coming down, imagine where all the lightest portions will be. You do not have a photograph to look at for this. We're Pretty much just referencing a, a drawing I found online plus adding to it some myself. The drawing I found online was not in color, so we're just sort of assuming where stuff will be here, okay? So now we're just going to add everywhere we think that the light is hitting the most, we're going to use the lightest version of this color we have, okay? That's why I have an assortment of different versions of this color, different hues of this color. I want to be able to grasp where the light's coming in and where the shadow's forming. Now, I may, some areas may be obviously darkened in, but I'm, t I'm hitting them with this light uh, color only because I want to be able to, like I said, blend them. It'll actually make it more intense. The more pigment is on an area, the more it's going to reflect shadow Okay, so there's a little bit of light hitting this. Of course you have a lot up here. All these buildings here are going to be hit probably the hardest with the light. If the sun is coming in from down this, this way. We have a little bit of a break here with, with a, a little alleyway. This building. You're going to see a lot of shadow popping up down in that way, down through there, okay? front of this building, and so on and so on. Now, the building on the far left <clears throat> will have light reflecting um, this one. The difference here is that I'm going to go ahead and color it and then add a darker value on top of it, like this. So I'm not going to leave it like that, okay? But I want to add a little bit of this <clears throat> wash on there so that I have something to build on as I go. Now, you can barely see this, I know. This is a very light color. Yeah, a little bit more up at the top here and we'll be ready. There we go. Okay. Now, a few lines coming down this way. There we go. All right. Now, what we're going to do from here is jump in and use a darker 
value of this color. Now with these alcohol-based markers, especially Copic, if you do something like this and you use graphite and you go back over it and you do as I've done and you've colored it some, be careful because you want to take your marker and just kind of brush it out a little bit. Now this should go a little bit faster. So there's that one. Now we're going to a little bit, a little bit darker this time, okay? Watch what happens here. Start adding this darker value. You're going to see stuff really start to pop out now. This shadow, of course, all the shadow inside of this. It's a very dark little alleyway back in there. This isn't this isn't uh, too much darker uh, than the first one, but it's 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 a dark enough that it's starting to blend and give us a different feel of what's here. Okay. Bicycle wheels behind the bicycle here. It's really picking up that graphite here, as you can see. That's okay. It's adding to it a little bit. So up at the top of the door here. Down this way, this arch, arch of this door is definitely going to be darker. Inside this window, these small shutters here. There we go. And then down this side of the building here, underneath this little bit of an awning and that door facing there, windows. Now we, here's we got the alley we talked about a minute ago. We definitely want that to be darker. Okay, and then the windows, door, so on and so forth. Now I'm going to switch from the uh, brush tip. These, these have two tips. I have a chisel tip and a brush tip. I'm going to switch now as we get closer and getting more detail here. There we go. Okay, now let's focus on this side just for a minute. The windows. Underneath the uh, facing. There we go. Now we're not done yet. We're almost done with the episode. However, we're not done with the color just yet. So watch what's going to happen here. Okay. Now I'm going to jump in and grab an even darker value of this color. Let's start out this time with the brush tip. This is where stuff really starts to pop out more. Now this almost matches in a weird way the graphite hue that we build up on and kind of collect. Some of these you will not use as much. You know, you start out, you use that light one pretty much over the whole drawing, okay? This one, not so much. Just a little bit here and there, okay? There we go. Give the idea that around this curve, the light source is getting blocked. See that? Now, let's jump in. A little bit darker here. We're starting to get real dark now, okay? This is where we can add a whole lot of value inside of these railings. And I'll start to see that really pop out now behind it. Like that. The bicycle tires, the seat back here. Okay, and we move upward now, inside the uh, window sill. Move down here, this side of the building that you can barely catch, it's where it sort of separates. And then you have, of course, the shutters here, inside of this window, inside of this, of course, the art. Archway is going to be much darker. Top of this door like that. Moving down now, the side of this building, inside those windows, and so on. So the idea is you're just hitting all the spots where the shadow is going to hit the most, leaving what the light source is going to be taking over. Okay. Now the more you do this, the easier this will become, almost to the point where it's second nature. Okay. You can almost imagine 
where your light source is and then sit down and do something from scratch without looking at hardly anything and get an idea of how it should look, okay? This might be a little bit darker right here, closer to that building. Maybe not too much. Now watch this, so see how this is, the difference between this and this and this is pretty intense, right? You can actually go back after you've used a lighter color, return to that color again, and blend it more. See that? So if it's a really, really sharp increase or decrease in a value, you can blend it out by returning to a previous color. Now there's also blenders that you can get that will make this uh, a little bit more noticeable, but I'm going to leave it here for right now. There we go. That's, that's pretty good. All right, let's keep on going. Now this one should be very dark, or at least darker. We're almost there anyway. Inside of this stucco, where the brick is, just add a little bit of shadow now, right inside there, okay? Sure, and go behind the bicycle too. Now, there's a couple more colors we're gonna use before we call it a day on this, but we're almost there. This one is so close to the other, I don't think we're getting much distance with it. So, I'm gonna jump onto a darker one now. And I'm not telling you what these colors are. Um, I probably should have been as we've moved along. But um, each Prismacolor comes with a number. And that number will indicate the type of value you're getting out of that color. Okay? I'm going to go really dark now. I think we should just jump ahead. We're almost done with the episode, so I don't want to jump too far over here. There we go. Now we're really, really hitting some dark hues here. See that? This is really should be reserved for the most, the darkest and most tense places of the drawing. See that? And then inside here, top of the window. Now you can move on, really get those shutters looking better. So the idea though with perspective, when you're combining pers you know, uh, perspective and a hue of a color, whether that hue is brown to form a uh, sepia or sepia, sepia <laughs> uh, look, or if it's green, or if it's yellow, or if it's blue, if it's whatever it might be, you know, your options here with perspective are endless when it comes to working with shadow, okay? So my advice is go find a, um, a landscape drawing or landscape reference, a picture, uh, sit down, try your best to first master the idea of understanding how the perspective works. And then from there, try your best to look and figure out if a light source was there, how would that light source interact with all those different angles, all that distance that you've created in your drawing, okay? It's a very fun, fun exercise in art. I love working with perspective. And as I said, every time I do it, I learn something a little different. Every time I do it, I say to myself, well, okay, uh, I was doing that wrong the entire time, and I move on, right? And that's the whole part of art is learning and figuring out, you know, where are you in your process, okay? Now, we could work this and keep working it over and over and over again, but I think where we are is pretty good on it. And now, if you followed at home, please remember, we would love to see it. All you have to do is take a snapshot of it, a picture on your phone, that's simple, Send it to us, simple email address, piketv99 at gmail, okay? Send it over, include your name, a little bit about yourself, maybe your age, if you're a student, where you go to school, and we'd love to share it here on Pike TV. okay? So, ah, one thing about alcohol-based markers, they have a little bit of a fume to them, so my eyes are watering just a little bit, uh, but they're so fun to play with and mess around with. Um, it really helps us put things into perspective, right? So, uh, thanks for tuning in today. Uh, we really in, uh, appreciate your viewership. And on behalf of Pack TV and everyone here, who go, all, all the folks behind the scenes making this show happen, we say thank you. Until next time, on behalf of the Art Workshop, I'm Christopher Epling, and keep drawing. <laughs>